I don't know if things changed for you, but for me, they did during the pandemic. I did start, I watched TV and um, the way I watched TV was just different than it was before. We're going to talk about this and uh, much more, of course, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it. Nicolas Rutka is going to talk about it. I'm very happy that you're here again on stage. Hi. Good to see you again. I hope you've Hi. had a good day so going? far. How's very well. You've been busy, busy doing lots of uh, interesting uh, panel discussions and fireside chats, and you're going to continue on with another very important topic. So um, I'm going to watch because it's all about watching right now. Yeah, it's all yeah. about watching. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And yeah, I already see you. Hi, Mark. Mark is with hey. us. Hi, Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, you, this is Mark Zagorski, CEO of Double Verify. Mark, it's so great that you are here and that you spent a couple of minutes with us talking about Connected TV. Maybe you would like to introduce yourself like in two or three sentences. So this would be your time uh, to introduce yourself. Sure, it's, it's great joining everybody here today. I'm Mark Skorsky, CEO of Double Verify. Um, no stranger to the digital world. I've been around uh, this space for around 20 years running companies like Exalate and most recently Telaria, uh, and now running uh, Double Verify as we kind of look to drive a greater sense of safety, security, and stability in the digital ad ecosystem. So it's great to be here and great to be back to Mexico. I, I miss being there in person, to be honest with you. Yeah. Next time. Uh, it's great uh, that you're here. Um, before we start talking about Connected TV, we need to talk about Metrix, because you just recently announced that you want to buy Metrix, a German-based competitor. Can you explain a little bit uh, what are your plans? Sure. Uh, so last week we announced we closed um, the deal on acquiring Metrix, uh, a great group of of talent, a great uh, technology platform. We're really excited to welcome Philip and Max and Hendrik and, and, and the rest of the team to the DV family. And I'm sure many of the folks who are, are based in Germany are very familiar with Metrix. Um, and the acquisition really plays into our long-term strategy when it comes to non-organic growth. And that's focusing on expanding our global footprint, um, looking at adding product adjacencies, so things that build out our product set, um, and then um, digging into and increasing our sector coverage. And that sector coverage includes expanding our footprint in social, expanding footprint in audio, and expanding it in CTV, which is why we're here today to talk about CTV. Yeah, we'll talk about CTV, and this is also expanding. That's why we talk about it. I had a look at your Global Insights report from this year, and I read that one third of all measured video ad impressions are now served on CTV devices in North America. So CTV is probably the leading driver of regions verified impressions. How did this happen? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, you know, we are certainly, you know, not ones to be driving consumer change. We we follow consumer change because that's where our advertisers go. And the real force behind this was the change in consumer habits. More and more people watching television through, you know, over the top or connected TV uh, channels. And that means more ad dollars were going there. And our focus is ensuring that our advertisers spend is safe and secure wherever that is and that is increasingly becoming ctv um, so that meant that our focus has been on building relationships with the providers of ctv content um, and the platforms through which it gets delivered so folks like roku and hulu and amazon and others um, and making sure that the ad spend that ends up on those platforms from our biggest advertisers um, is meets the same brand safety viewability um, you know, fraud protection and geographic alignment that it does on every other platform. So CTV is has really become, you know, a big part of our business and the future of our business based on the fact that that's where the consumers are going and that's where the advertisers are going. Why are they going there? Uh, well, advertisers are going there because the demographics of, of CTV viewers are impeccable, right? They're um, higher income, better educated, and younger than traditional television, um, but also because they can um, use a lot of the same strategies that they used in traditional digital, so targeting strategies, um, metrics on evaluation, um, that they were able to use in traditional digital. Now they can use in a full screen, you know, living room television environment. Um, so, you know, they're going there because it's the best of all worlds. It's the best of 
television. You have a full screen immersive set. Um, and the best of digital, which is the ability to track and measure, um, you know, the impressions that end up there. So that's why advertisers are there and advertisers go where the consumers are. Are you seeing more brands demanding verification on connected TV devices and connected TV? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, what we see brands are, you know, they rush to CTV because of all the things I just noted, um, lots of consumers there great opportunity to, to, you know, target and, and track. Um, but at the end of the day, it's another piece of their broader arsenal of delivering messaging. And our perspective is as DV is to ensure that we verify that messaging everywhere. So whether it's a social platform, a display ad, a web application, we want advertisers to be able to measure and verify with the same criteria um, on any platform. And as advertisers have moved into CTV, they came to us and said, look, we want to ensure that it's viewable the same way a display ad is viewable. We want to ensure that it's in the right geo the same way we do that on a mobile app. Um, we want to make sure that uh, it's brand safe and that it meets our brand safety criteria the same way that we do across social platforms. So, so at the end of the day, um, it's not that brands are demanding more out of CTV or, you know, a, they're basically demanding the same things that they've asked for, for verification across all, all other platforms, right? And I think that is the key thing here, which is advertisers are looking for a consistent metric across all platforms. And CTV is increasingly not an outlier. It's part of a core advertising plan or a core media plan that almost all advertisers in North America now engage with. So when advertisers come to you, how do you address these differences in measurement and verification on CTV, OTT? And should advertisers expect the same coverage on CTV as they do on other channels? How do yeah, you address so, this as a company? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, so the way we've looked at CTV is there are certainly, um, you know, different nuances to things like viewability. Um, you know, how is it, wh how do you measure viewability on a CTV screen versus, uh, um, you know, a display or a mobile app or something like that? Our drive and, and, and what we seek to do is create a single consistent standard, no matter what that screen is. So, for example, when we look at um, CTV viewability, it's all about measuring quartile completion. Was that ad run through the first full quartile? So was, that's the viewability measurement. That viewability measurement maps up against the viewability measurements that we have across other platforms as well, so that there can be a single standard. Um, other areas like geography, because it's an IP-based solution, CTV is IP-based, a lot of the same methodology that we use around geography is consistent. So there are some consistencies when it comes to certain aspects of brand safety and geography. Viewability is a different, is slightly different story, but our drive as a company is to ensure that all of the metrics map up to a single standard that meets the standards of each advertiser. So we set the ground rules. They put the parameters in that map what they want out of brand safety or geography, et cetera. But what is most important for the advertisers is that those standards are consistent from platform to platform. And that's our key, go our key role here as a partner to them is to ensure that there's no variations in standards from place to place, because CTV, again, is just another part of their overall media arsenal. So advertisers can expect the same coverage on your, uh, we're working with you on CTV as they do on other channels. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, the, as I mentioned earlier, when you talk about, there's technology and there's coverage. And when you talk about coverage, it's who you're working with and the partners that you have that are delivering media that you're that you're evaluating. And for us, it's all the biggest platforms that we work with. Um, you know, in North America, it's folks like Roku, folks like Amazon, Hulu, et cetera, in which, you know, we have a great partnership in working together to ensure that there's a huge amount of confidence in the advertisers um, buying across those media platforms, as well as the channels in which they buy through. So, you know, our relationships with all the major DSPs, folks like Trade Desk and Google and others that really own a lion's share of the CTV programmatic buying is just as important 
So it's it's the relationship with the key people that are providing the content, as well as with the key folks that are buying against the content. And that's the major DSPs at this stage. Okay, so um, volume on programmatic buys increased. What are these implications on quality and measurement standards on video and CTV? It's a great, it's a great question. I mean, as we've seen programmatic evolve over the years, you know, the one of the challenge programmatic is great in so many ways, right? It reduces so much friction between buyers and sellers. It allows for a very accurate targeting. Um, but one of the challenges that we've always seen with programmatic is that in some cases it lacks transparency. Um, and that's always been a challenge for buyers because in some cases they don't, they have to feel confident of where that ad is going to show up. Um, CTV is no, is no different. And I think that um, the program in programmatic, there's still a, lot of, a lack of transparency around CTV. A lot of that is driven by the fact there's, there's still a supply and demand imbalance. There's way more demand for connected television impressions um, than there is supply, which means that those suppliers can actually provide a bit less information to those buyers um, and, and still get the buy being completed. Um, because of that, there's still a little bit of uncertainty amongst advertisers and buyers around what they're actually getting in some cases. What we try to do is provide more comfort and clarity around what that transaction looks like, even if the advertisers are buying through programmatic uh, venues. This is going to grow over time. I think programmatic still um, has less than a majority of all the transactions um, in CTV, which is very different than you'd see, for example, in display and mobile. So as programmatic takes a greater and greater share of connected television transactions, I think you're going to see a drive for more transparency. You're going to see a push for greater verification across those platforms. And the true importance of having third parties in there to create greater comfort around that programmatic transaction in CTV. Thank you. That's very, very, very interesting. We talked about North America at the beginning. What is your view on CTV globally? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, the, we know that De Mexico is a global show, um, and it's so it's you know it would be wrong for us just to sit here and talk about what's going on in North America around CTV. Um, one of the things, just taking a step back, CTV has really has been a really interesting evolution because in a lot of ways, CTV phenomenon started in APAC, in the APAC region, where there was um, a lot lower penetration of traditional television and a much higher penetration of IP-based television. Um, so a lot of the learnings that we've seen in North America came out of APAC first. Advertisers got savvy there first. We saw much more programmatic transactions hit there first. Then they evolved into North America. And I think now we're seeing some of those transitions happen in EMEA. And if you look at, for example, a recent IAB Europe study, 70% uh, of advertisers and 61% of agencies think that CTV will be one of the key programmatic growth areas in, in this year, in 2021. So, um, you know, we're seeing this kind of movement from APAC through North America to EMEA of what's happening both on CTV transactions, but how those transactions are done. So I think we're going to see greater advertiser focus on connected television in Europe. Um, we're going to see greater consumer uptake, which obviously precedes advertiser uptake. Um, and we're going to see programmatic move into that market as well. It's just a global evolution. And as we saw the same thing with mobile and with desktop and display, um, programmatic eventually eats everything. It just does. It's, it's too efficient. It takes out too much friction. So even in connected television, you know, we see programmatic taking a lion's share of that. And, you know, because of that, in the same way that we've, built a significant advertiser and platform you know business around um, supporting display and mobile verification um, we see greater upside both for our business and for our clients business in ctv and, and emea over time as well what would be your advice to your clients in in europe taking the learnings from apec and north america yeah, uh, you know, so a, a few key things. I think first off is that, um, you know, demand transparency. And, you know, I think if there's one thing that advertisers um, are still reluctant to do is that there are still, um, 
they're still allowing the content providers to call the shots. And I think there's a greater ability for advertisers um, to push for greater transparency. And whether that's third-party verification and validation of what's going on in that transaction, or just a better understanding of where their impressions are ending up in the CTV world, I think one, out of the gate, demand greater transparency. And then number two, I would say, think about what your brand means in a large screen environment. You know, there's there. This is a TV-like you know experience. So that brand impact is going to be much greater in a living room than it is in a banner that sits on someone's website. So making sure that your brand safety and your viewability requirements align with what experience you want to create in the living room of a consumer, I think is really critical. We've learned over time that you can't just repurpose a pre-roll ad that you do on a social video into someone's living room. It's a much higher quality experience um, and the brand safety criteria, the programming that you're around, the viewability requirements that you have play a big part of that as well. What is your outlook into the future, like CTV in two years from now or three years from now? Uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think it'll be much more programmatically transacted. So number one, um, it will follow the same path that we've seen in mobile and desktop. I think number two, the ability to, uh, to reach specific audiences is gonna be interesting based on the way the privacy rules are changing globally. Um, so context will become a bigger part of not just the way CTV is bought and sold, but the way all digital media is bought and sold. So I think you know everything old is new again. People used to buy sports programming to reach men. I think we're gonna see a lot more contextual buying of CTV rather than individual targeted buying of CTV. Um, and then, you know, I think the third thing is there's going to be a greater demand for validation and verification. So I'm just, you know, I, in the same way, I want to make sure that there's an ROI for my digital spend. I want an ROI for my CTV spend and connect that back to a transaction, back to a purchase, back to um, some type of, of brand engagement. Thank you very much. You know, DMXCO's motto this year is setting new priorities. What is the most important priority? You have like 40 seconds for this in, in, regarding seconds. CTV. <laughs> regarding CTV, I think, look, regarding CTV and regarding our, our entire business, I think it, it is the same priority, which is we want to accelerate scale. You know, as a business, it's about ensuring that we measure every impression across every platform in any media and any market in the planet. And CTV is a core part of that. So our ability to scale is is our new is not a new priority is a key priority for us accelerate there we want to accelerate that scale um, in the year um, so that's our focus for 2021 and beyond which is accelerate scale and ensure that ctv is part of that story mark thank you so much ladies and gentlemen mark sagorski ceo of double verify unfortunately we have a little bit to accelerate here now and move on in the program <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining. Um, Emily is coming back on stage. Hello, yes. Emily. That was interesting, wasn't it? Absolutely. And I, I like that he said Mark, every. Bye. bye bye, Mark. And I like that you said um, everything old is new. That makes me new, too, I think. <laughs> well, we'll come on stage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so bye much, bye. Nicolas. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Mark, for your time today. And it's great to have you here at the uh, DM Expo 2021. You said that the number is going to go up to the end of the year. So we're going to look forward to see what, if that really is true at the end of this year. Mm -hmm.